Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. And tonight we are drinking Elmer T. Lee for the very first time. Both of these bourbons come to us from Buffalo Trace. Neither one of them is readily available by any means, but these bottles have more in common than that. They are both Mash Bill 2, which is Buffalo Trace's high rye mash bill, somewhere between 12 and 15% is what it's thought to be. Elmer T. Lee is 90 proof, Blanton's is 93 proof, I had to check because I don't memorize things, and uh, they're both single barrel products. and. They're both named after figures in Buffalo Trace's history. In fact, Elmer T. Lee is the one who gave the world Blanton's single barrel, and uh, they both have great names. Elmer T. Lee, I don't know what the T stands for. I looked, couldn't find it. <laughs> and Colonel Albert B. Blanton, middle name Bacon. We've been over that before, we love it. Love it. But this is a bottle that we thought we missed here in Oregon. Came and went real quick, and then we got a call from a friend of ours, said, Special I got surprise. a bottle for you. We went and picked it up and we're so stoked to have it. So both of these bottles are aged between five and seven years. The Elmer used to be aged 12 to 14 years. That's all changed as of the last several years. And I don't know if it's because of demand for the products or what, but both of these thought to be either five to seven or six to eight years age, depending on who you ask. So tonight we are gonna try the Elmer and we're working on a bottle kill of this <laughs> Blanton's here uh, because we wanna know how similar or how different are these. Of course they're single barrels, so you expect some variants from even within Blanton's, even within Elmer T. Lee bottles. And it's a beautiful sunset, calm evening. You may hear some traffic around here. It's not the most peaceful of settings, but I think it's a pretty decent place to drink some whiskey. What do you think? Yeah, and I also kind of think you can see a bit of the sunset in the window of the van. Yeah, so if you're getting lost in my... Like a, yeah, it looks it, like a photo. If you're getting lost in my eyes, it could just be the sunset reflection. So Elmer T. Lee first, we're gonna to get to the nose, the palette, the finish, and then we will check out the blends. We're not gonna do value or comparable bottles or anything like that tonight. We're just exploring a new uh, bottle of Buffalo Trace for us, and uh, we're gonna see what we think of it. And if they're pretty comparable, neither one of them you can find anywhere so, but doesn't matter this one's still like 20 dollars cheaper yeah the blends by the way we buy here in oregon for about 60 dollars, and the elmer t lee cost us 38 dollars. all right here we go let's get to the nose i'm excited first ever first ever very caramely it's got a buffalo traceness to it already totally just a hint a baby hint of ethanol in the nose baby hint yeah just a baby hint yeah it, at 90 proof we don't expect much heat here there's a uh, orange zest and vanilla that actually is familiar that's kind of a blanton's thing that's kind of a mash bill 2 thing is my understanding by the way mash bill 2 rock hill farms and uh, hancock's reserve ancient age they all supposedly come from that same mash bill uh, we don't have an ancient age i drank it all <laughs> So I could buy another one for $11, but I'm cheap. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. I almost went and took a sip of this because it's so inviting. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's a, it, it does have a very familiar nose, very caramely. Yeah. You can smell some vanilla in there. It's going to be good. Yeah. Cheers. Citrus, vanilla, caramel. What's not to like? Cheers. Very caramely. Yeah. Pretty thin. Um, just, oh. That was like my immediate thing that it was like, it was just kind of ran off my tongue a bit. Ran off your tongue? I got a Kentucky yeah. hug. I, somebody, I feel like somebody loves me. Did you? That's Already? A, yeah, right off the bat. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hugger. This is going to sound strange. It almost tastes cold. It's not cold. It's a room temperature, but the flavors themselves almost make you feel like they're cold. Is that like huh. a, an odd thing to say? Super odd. Yeah, I really I'm like the it. the one that's saying I, it. I like it because I don't know what you're talking about, but I... I think I, I think yeah. it's like the vanilla -y or some of the like the baking. I don't know. It just it's just, just an interesting thing. Is it because you relate your baking with wintertime? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit of baking spice here yeah. for sure. Uh, clove, some very gentle cinnamon, vanilla extract more than bean, mm -hmm. little caramel. It's very pleasant. It's not the most complex of drinks, but it's nice and there is a little bit of spice there. Which I'm I imagine a little comes pepper. From my little pepper. Tinge of like a leather or a something, like a tinge. Yeah, there's leather here. You're absolutely right. Hmm. And actually, the mouthfeel, it coats nice, but it's thin. It runs away real quick. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm getting a little bit of a, like a creamsicle thing here. The orange, the vanilla, and it's you not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's what I'm getting for it. So baking spices, orange and vanilla, leather. Yeah, I just a got some A little caramel, orange. but not strong caramel. I got some orange zest right there. Yeah, the yeah. orange is definitely showing up here. There's nice flavors. It's very light. Yeah, it's... And I, I mean, we said thin, but I'm just saying, like, the flavors are light. It's just a... Uh, it's kind of a nice hot afternoon type of drink. It's not hot afternoon right now, but no, still. No, it's not. So I'm getting a lot of that leathery pepperiness on the finish. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice warm finish. It's not long lasting. It's not a super coating type of finish, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, it hangs around just a bit. Yep, I like it because it is a little earthy on the finish. The leather is mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. The sweetness isn't cloying or overly sweet. Nope. The coating is pretty nice. I, I think this is just a nice, well-balanced whiskey and I like that it's sort of a higher rye we, I just was watching the Mash and Drums live stream with uh, Mr. Metz, who is the distiller from Old Elk, and he was talking about how you really don't even notice the rye until it gets up to about that 15% mm -hmm. level. And I feel like they say this is about 12 to 15% rye in the mash bill, so I, I think that's where that comes from. This is a nice, well-balanced Buffalo Trace product. Pleasant, lovely. Yeah. Buffalo Trace, what do you, I mean, it's pretty much what we expect. I'm ready to try this Blanton's. Yeah. Save myself 20 bucks here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Wow, the nose on um, the Elmer is very, like, seems sweet now. Yeah, I this, agree with this that. This one's more of a richer caramel on this nose. Neither one of them really gives off any ethanol nope. masking on the nose. I'm getting maybe a little more caramel, a little more vanilla extract on this one. Let's give it a sip. <laughs> Uh, tinge more heat on this one. I get a ton of fruit on this one. This, this I, is an mine orange, was all caramel. orange vanilla bomb for me. It's definitely um, not as thin. Like it's a it's a thicker mouthfeel on this one. Yeah, there's a nice viscosity here. I'm getting a lot more vanilla on this one. Yeah, the vanilla is a little bit different. It's a sweeter vanilla. Mm -hmm. What's interesting when we match things up is that normally I say Blanton's taste a little bit apple cidery. Yep. And I'm not getting any of that right no, now. No, I'm getting, I'm getting tons of orange, tons of vanilla. Yeah. Lots of caramel, a little more heat, like you said, and that mm. tends to build here. There's some cinnamon here. Both of them show baking spice, a little clove, a little cinnamon. Mm. They're both pleasant. Yeah, they're good. Honestly, if I had to guess, I would say that the differences here could be chalked up to the single barrels. You could probably find an Elmer T. Lee bottle that tastes more like Blanton's and vice versa. Yeah. I think they're really, really similar. The one difference that's probably showing itself here is that the Blanton's is aged in that metal warehouse, whereas the Elmer is generally aged in a wood or brick and mortar warehouse, is my understanding. So temperature fluctuations could be different and that could contribute to these differences. They're honestly not all that different. I think that I do prefer the Blanton's, but it's not like it's a landslide. I find them both pleasant in their own way and they're both very good. I think for $38, the Elmer T. Lee is a sound what? glass of, yeah, a sound bottle of whiskey. It's really, really good. And I might break a few hearts here, but neither one of them are like super wowing me today. I mean, I just, I've, I am very much enjoying both of them, but it's not one of those yeah. special occasion type deal. No, I but would you say. you would think that it would be because of limbs. Right. I, I, I think that it's, they're both very tasty, but I also think that these are whiskeys that you sort of showcase subtlety with. And we're sitting outside, mm -hmm. aromas tend to come and go very quickly here, and True. you know other influencing factors when you're outside tasting whiskey. So I think that that may be affecting this tasting right here, that we're just not getting a ton here. But I would say the citrus, the vanilla, the caramel, uh, and even a little bit of oak on each of these, not a ton of oak, but a, a nice amount. Those are the prevailing flavors for me. And like Julie said, they're, it's pleasant, it's lovely, it's tasty, it's flavorful. Yeah. It's not knock your socks off good, either one of these. We're very happy, of course, to have both of these bottles and they're both Static. very good. Anything that comes out that's Buffalo Trace, generally we are fans and we try to get our hands on all those bottles because they're also highly rated. So I really like both of these. I think they're both solid whiskeys. Yeah, I really like both of them. I did a little A-B testing and the flavor profile of the Blanton's does pull me a little bit more in that direction. The Elmer's a little peppery. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like them both. Yeah, I think that the Blanton's has a better mouthfeel. Yeah. Maybe a little longer lasting finish, but yeah. again, both of these solid bottles, if you see them, get them. Yeah. If you're chasing them on secondary and you're doing all sorts of crazy things to try and acquire them, I honestly don't know that I can recommend that. I would say we're fortunate because we've got them on the shelf. We can say something like that, yeah. obviously. But I do think that the Elmer holds up and if you cannot get a Blanton's, Elmer, to me, 
is a fine consolation prize. It's very well balanced whiskey. It's flavorful. It's tasty. And uh, again, these are subtle whiskeys. So taste them in your own way and yeah. find the flavors that appeal to you. Uh, but yeah, like Julie said, they're both great. The Blanton's probably wins out by just a little bit of a, just but, a by hair. just a hair here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been a lovely evening. It has. And now I have two whiskeys to enjoy the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Two should just about do it tonight. I think it's going to be a nice one. Well, if you've tried both of these bourbons, let us know which one your favorite is. If you haven't tried either one of them, tell us which one you'd be most excited to come across in the wild. Yeah, because I like them both. <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Join us on Patreon for exclusive live streams and bonus content. Check us out on Instagram at The Bourbon Van and from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. I'm pumped about that, Elmer's. It's good. Pleasant. Yeah.